When diagnosing electrical faults, it's important to understand exactly what it is that you're measuring and the relationship between each item of measurement. It's imperative to know why these measurements are taken in particular ways so that your results are an insight into the potential problem and not just some mystery number on your multimeter. So let's get started turning your multimeter display from this magic into this, something that can help you out. There are only three measurable elements in a circuit, voltage, current and resistance. Every other unit of measurement is a calculation based on one or a combination of these items. Let's take a very, very close look at what exactly these are. We can see that our circuit, like us and everything around us, is constructed from atoms and their atomic particles. An atom, like a tiny solar system, has a nucleus consisting of neutrons with no electrical charge, protons with a positive charge, and orbited by electrons with a negative charge. The unlike force attraction of the proton and the electron perfectly balancing the centrifugal force of the electron's orbit. The number of electrons in the outer orbit of our atoms determine its ability to conduct electricity. The more electrons in the outer orbit, the stronger the balancing forces keeping them in orbit, the higher the resistance to having electrons freed. This resistance is measured in ohms. Say for example, we use a magnetic field to push one of our electrons out of orbit our perfect atom becomes an unbalanced ion. If an atom loses an electron, a positive ion. If it gains an electron, a negative ion. Let's get our magnet again and create another positive ion. Freed electrons move away from the EMF, the electromotive force, from one ion to the next. A series of electrons moving from ion to ion is electrical current, measured in amps. If we take a large number of atoms, no more than that, that's it. If we take a large number of atoms, we can free a large number of electrons. The amount of difference in free electrons between two points is voltage, measured in volts. Let's go back out to our circuit and see how this is applied in the real world. We've got voltage, measured in volts, which is the difference in free electrons between two points. Current, measured in amps the flow of electrons at a single point and resistance measured in ohms how difficult it is to free electrons between two points let's take a look at how v i and r interact with and affect each other voltage in terms of electrical fault finding voltage cannot be affected by current or resistance voltage can only be too big too small or perfect Resistance, again in terms of electrical fault finding, cannot be affected by current or voltage. Resistance can only be too big, too small or perfect. Current is affected by both resistance and voltage. As voltage increases, so does current flow. And as voltage decreases, so does current flow. Current flow is inversely affected by resistance. As resistance increases, current flow decreases, and as resistance decreases, current flow increases. Electrical fault finding isn't about finding what's wrong with a circuit, it's about finding what's right, making a mental list of possible faults and ruling them out with tests one by one. Voltage being the difference in free electrons between two points can only be measured in parallel. Current being the flow of electrons past a single point can only be measured in series, meaning that you need to disconnect the circuit to allow the electrons to flow through the meter for measurement. And resistance being the opposition to electron flow. It's always advised that components are disconnected when measuring resistance. In the next video, we'll have a look at some construction of circuits, focusing on voltage, types of voltage and voltage tests. We here at OLCT like all feedback, good or bad. If you've got something to say, please say it. If you found this tutorial useful, please share the link in the comments box or like our Facebook page on this link.